Um, can you hear me? Is it loud enough? Okay, so I'm talking about speech recognition, how you can use Python to do it. But you can't. So, um, <laughs> because you speak New Zealand English. Um, so we've got about um, 28 minutes for questions. <laughs> Um, okay, one question. What do Americans do? Because it works for Americans, not for Australians or New Zealanders or even British people. Americans it works for. Um, they just install some modules. Now, you can do it either using Python or using GStreamer and then playing with GStreamer through Python, but you don't want to do that unless you like GStreamer. Um, and, or else you can use... Pocket Sphinx is, is a thing written by um, Carnegie Mellon University, and so this kind of gets developed in uh, like PhD size spurts here and there. And then there's uh, other universities have their ones, and um, Julius is a Japanese one, so it's quite good, apparently, but um, it doesn't have an English model at all because they don't speak English. And, the, and there's another one that um, they've written in Java, the CMU people. Um, so, anyway, you install the modules, you import the um, decoder object, and then these blue lines, normally you just put them inside the um, decoder constructor call, but um, I made this text too small, made the line too long, made the text small, so I didn't do that. Um, and also I'm going to refer back to them. And then, so the, then you, you, you skip past the first 44 bytes of your WAV file, and that gets you to the actual sound. You can use a um, proper wave decoder. It, does, it has the same effect. Um, cause you, well, not quite the same effect, because you, you would have the chance to abort if it wasn't the right kind of wave. And then it gives, gives you a hypothesis of what, the, what speech is in that wave. So if you were speaking with an American accent, you could talk to Audacity. In fact, here's an example. It, look, there's no... Python documentation, but there is a lightning talk which just has everything that was in the last slide, and he does it. A five minute live coding lightning talk, everything goes wrong that could possibly go wrong, and um, he still finish, finishes in four minutes. And, <laughs> um, so the, um, there's more different things you can do, um, but that's really what you want. So that's the end of the Python specific part of the talk. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> those things that were blue in that slide before, the, the, like the magic bits that were passed to the decoder to tell it um, how to decode speech. Um, there's three things. There's an acoustic model, a language model, and a dictionary. Now, um, and they're tuned to the language. So the, the code... Pocket strings, which is written in C, and the Python bindings are just sort of bindings. Um, it's language agnostic. So you don't, to, to adapt it to New Zealand English, you don't, need, um, you don't need to change any code. You just need a new model, or, or you need at least, one, you, at least you need a new acoustic model, and maybe you need a new language model. Um, I'll get to that. So the acoustic model matches sounds to um, probable phonemes. So um, it's a, it's a hidden, uses a hidden Markov model, which basically just means it looks at the, everything in the context of what's come before, really. And because um, the same sound can be um, different things depending on what's before and after, different phonemes. And, it's a bit like handwriting. It's a, bit like, a phoneme is like a letter. Um, it's a unit of speech. And, um, but it's like a handwritten unit of speech rather than a printed one. Like it's always different. And um, they, in fact, they use these, the same software with a different front end. They use it for handwriting recognition. So the, the um, metaphor is quite a good one. So it looks at the sound. And then it kind of traces paths through it and invents probabilities. 
and then it comes out with comes up with a big long list of things with different probabilities, and usually you just want the most probable one. Sometimes you can also ask it like, is the other saying more likely to be saying yes than no? Um, if you want to just do something like make something annoying on the telephone, you know, that I need to say yes or no to. Um, and then the language model it looks at the the phonemes that. Um, so the acoustic model spits out a list of probable phonemes. The language model looks at those phonemes and it says that those don't seem like they make a sensible sentence. So that's not really... It pushes those ones, the, the, the phonemes that aren't likely, sequences that aren't likely down, and, and the ones that are more likely are brought up. So it kind of looks at it at a, at a language level. And it's just made by um, feeding, you know, gigabytes of text through, through a thing that learns. Um, I think it would be a trigram or something model. So if, if you had two words, what's more, what are the likely next words? And so, um, yeah. And then they talk to each other through a dictionary, which has, um, it's, they call them pronouncing dictionaries, which is a kind of a strange, strange word, but. Um, it just has a list of words, and by, by, def by convention, they always use uppercase. I don't know why. It's a bit annoying. But um, it has a list of words and then a list of phonemes. Now, these, those phonemes, they're just arbitrary symbols. Um, I mean, they could be anything, so long as it's consistent. But that, what they're using there is called ARPABET. It's invented by the, the American Army. Um, and... Um, their, their dictionary that the, it Sphinx uses by default has 39, a phoneme set of 39 phonemes. And so every word is pushed into those 39 phonemes. And that's, um, and, and when there's alternate um, pronunciations, like for tuple or tuple, it has them both. They, they, I mean, they don't have tuple and tuple, they just have everything tuple, tuple. Um, but it's, um, it, words just change depending um, depending what's after them, the context, where, that's changed all the time. So it's actually really, uh, the dictionary is treating every word as if it was its own little sentence. And, and if, we, if a word isn't in a sentence, people just say different things at either end of it, so it doesn't really work like that. Um, so, I'll, t I'll talk about what, what phonemes and um, well, some of the problems w with the American um, English system. It's that they, and um, to talk about that, I've got to talk about some linguistics things. Um, so, um, this is a vowel chart. That yellow bit, yellowy orange, is um, a vowel chart. This is how linguists um, mark up where, what vowels, how they're pronounced, it, and it represents your mouth. So that's, I can't remember which one of you it was, so it's somebody. Um, and it, they, they put a, a symbol where the top tip of the tongue is when you're making that vowel. So the vowel in kit, um, for this speaker, the tongue is in that position. Um, and then they just they take away the tongue <laughs> and the head, and they leave that. So this this is how they um, would depict how people, somebody, pronounces the word kit, right? And and any and there's a whole set of words that use the same, like pit and um, fish and chips. They use that same. They call it the lexical set. It's the same sound, um, and now, so Americans um, or to Americans on TV. This is like the TV accent. It's not like, um, well, you know, I had a picture of Obama before. He would speak like this, but Bush wouldn't, and Clinton wouldn't, and they probably wouldn't get recognised even by by their software. Well, not as well as Obama. Because you need to be from the middle of America or 
maybe California for it to work. Anyway, um, they, so the comma vowel, which is the a on the end of comma, is called the schwa, and they use the, um, the nurse sound is at the same place. And then there's, you know, there's just a few of them. This is an example of a, of a problem. So, so they have the same sound for nurse and comma. Um, just, uh, really? And then um, David Attenborough, he has the same, more or less the same thing. So it's not that different. Um, and this is what New Zealand English has happened. <laughs> There's a lot of, lot of sounds that kind of... A lot of these ones have gone towards the front of the mouth. There's other vowels around the back that have shifted around too, but there's a lot of pressure on the top front of your mouth. And so that um, kit sound has sort of jumped down to where the nurse was, so it's merged with the comma sound. Um, and then, and this just because of the... There was an Australian here before. So this is what ha the same sort of rush up to the corner has happened to, in Australia, but their kits, it didn't, it didn't race away. It, it, it just kind of went up and pushed the fleece. So they, you know, they, that's why they, they uh, can't say fish and chips the same as us. Um, <laughs> so, and, and, so that, um, now, American, Americans have 39 phonemes and that, actually they, they use 40, but in the CMU dictionary they have 39. And there's a whole lot of sounds like the comma and nurse one merged, but there's more merges around the back where father and bother, they, they rhyme. And, they, and um, court and cot, they, they, they sound the same. Um, and well, yeah, there they were. Pants. If you read Dr. Seuss, um, he's always trying to rhyme pants with chance or with glance, like in the Lorax. The Lorax has, picks himself by his set of his pants and has a backward glance. And you know, you, 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 um, it doesn't rhyme. And hurry and furry somehow rhyme. And, and you know, the, the, they have. Various things have been squashed together, which are distinct for us. And then there's things that are merged for us. Now, the, the, the bear, bear and bear. Like there's, there's some people, um, no, you know, you've probably already had a teacher saying, you know, it's not bear, it's bear. And, you're, and, you're, um, and it all sounds the same. And so everyone has kind of given up trying to distinguish. Most people have. Some people think they're distinguishing the difference in the sounds, but um, it doesn't matter because no one else can. So they're, they're sort of... And you don't need it. You don't need this distinction. You know, you're never really confused. We don't have, we don't have bears here. Um, and the, and the, the fish and the thing is the same as... Um, it's a, the kit sound that it's moving. So that these, these are the two of them... The, the notable features of New Zealand English. But otherwise, it's pretty standard. There's similar distinctions to, to British English on the whole. And so, um, that's. Uh, there was actually something I sort of missed out. So, but I'll get to it. Um, to get a. To get a a model of New Zealand English, um, there's, there's the three parts. It's the acoustic model, the dictionary, and the language model. Um, the language model, because it's just the, the form, the syntax of English, pretty much, or the, um, it might be okay, except it would need... The, sp the spelling is a bit of a trouble for... Um, you know, they don't know how to spell humour and things that Americans. Um, so the, anyway, there's two ways you can make a new acoustic model. You can adapt an existing one, which means adapting the American, general American English one, or you can create a new one. And either way, you need um, to use a whole of the speech. 
Um, but adapting, you need just a small amount of speech, um, um, which I'm not sure exactly how small small is, but it's small. Smaller, than, like 10 sentences can, uh, can have an effect. Um, and if you were American and you were adapting the model to your voice, 10 sentences would have a good effect. If you're a New Zealander trying to adapt the model to your, your, your dialect, it doesn't work. But, um, and I haven't actually found the magic number that does work. Um, but the trouble is that the phoneme set, which is the, the 39 phonemes that were used in um, the dictionary, they're fixed. So um, here's a Venn diagram kind of making the point that New Zealand English and American English, the, but they have a different number of phonemes and they're not the same ones. Like, uh, maybe 35 of them or something are the same, but um, the other ones, you can't, you can't very easily reuse them in the way you want. So... Um, if you're adapting the um, existing model, you have to somehow try and squeeze your um, your language into into American phonemes. And um, <coughs> yeah, with the, this is just making the same point as all. So sometimes it's apart from the um, the duplication, they just like they they don't say tune with a little um, yeah in it. Um, and um, so one way to do that is to make a new dictionary one way to try and make it work better is to make a new dictionary that uses the same phoneme sets um, and like father and bother would be better off if they had for us, if they had the, the vowel and kit at the end rather than the, the, um, they're using ER which is a, is a sound that we don't actually use well, Southlanders do, but um, <laughs> um, a general English, you just kind of go uh, at the end of father. I mean, everyone in the world, apart from the Americans, doesn't, doesn't pronounce the R on the end of these things. Um, but then there's actually no, because they don't have the sound that you use when you say bother, the, the O sound, there's just nothing you can do. To, you can try mapping it to all different vowels, and none of them match. So there's just no way that you can make a dictionary that will help, um, will, will allow, allow a, um, a model to be adapted to New Zealand English. For that kind of thing, we just, just won't, can't learn it. Um, so, and then, oh yeah, New Zealand English pronouncing dictionaries, well, there's no such thing. Um, there's British English ones. And they're mostly, well, they're all non-free. And, and the thing is, if you go back to the, remember back to the decoder slide, you needed to provide the dictionary with the um, model. So you can't, if, if you use a non-free dictionary, you, well, you have to distribute that with your non-free thing. It makes the whole thing non-free. Um, whereas the speech, you can use non-free speech, and it just sort of disappears. Because it, it, people, people make use TV and stuff. Um, anyway. Um, but you can generate a dictionary using um, a text-to-speech um, system, which will read the text, and normally you use it, you, it talks to you, but you can just make it spit out phonemes. And um, there's you know, hundreds of these now. And the one that I've tried with um, is eSpeak, because it, it uses um, received pronunciation or um, quite good British English, which has the same distinctions as New Zealand English, if not the same sounds. So it, 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 that's actually IPA, um, Interne International Phonetic. I don't know what the A stands for. Association, Association yeah, but they... Alphabet, alphabet that'll be the one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and that, that's the right um, 
the right kind of symbols. And, it, it, and because it's using um, rules, it, it'll just give it any, it'll come up with a pronunciation for, you know, whakapapa or something. And, and which is really quite useful because um, if you're not, if you don't, if you don't have something like this, you actually have to sit down and write out all your thousand or so New Zealand words. And, and I don't want to do that. Um, and then what you need to make in, to adapt a model, you, you need your dictionary, which you, um, and then you need these little. Um, can you read that? You probably can. So there's, you have, a, you have a whole lot of speech files with little bits of speech in them. And then you have um, a, a transcript of each thing written out in a line and with a, with a little um, a thing in, in, parents, in brackets, whatever they are, at the end is, just matches um, the file name. So it's just... It listens to the, the training software listens to the um, word and it looks up each word, listens to the, the sound, looks up each word in the, um, in the text through the dictionary and then it tries to match those phonemes to the sounds. And so if you have a too long one, it just gets lost somewhere along the way um, and a too short one's not worth it. And quite often that gets confused anyway because the transcription is wrong. And... Um, well, like, the, like a good transcription, see it has the um there, which says, don't worry about this, this isn't a real word. Um, but the bad transcription will just ignore the um, and then it just throws out the speech recognizer because it doesn't know. You know, there's a phoneme there which isn't, isn't marked up. Um, and it's, so transcribing is slow because you need to write exactly what people say, not what they are trying to say, which is normally, you know, if you're writing down what someone's saying, you just you cut corners. Um, and, but you can, if you get a longer transcription, it's easy, easier to cut it up to little bits, but it's not anywhere near real time. Um, so you, to make a, um, a speech model, you really need to... Um, Find someone who's already got speech that's transcribed. Otherwise, you'd, you'd be spending hours doing this stuff. And there are um, a few. Voxforge are trying to make an open source model, a GPL model um, of English in general. Um, and some of their, some of their um, speech is New Zealand English, but not very much. Um, the Wellington Corpus has... Um, a whole lot of speech, but now because they were working in the um, 80s and 90s, they um, they didn't have software to help them with the transcription, and they so they the the breaks in their um, utterances, that's what they call them, that are, are just done by hand. So that, now what you want in an utterance is a it's meant to be a gap between silences, and the bit in the middle, people go, blah, 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 and then it's a silence. Um, but because it's been done by students, doing it by hand, they listen to the thing, um, and they actually are breaking it um, um, at semantic points, and at sentence endings, but sometimes a sentence can end at the same time as the next one is beginning, and there's not actually any break in the sound. So the Wellington corpus um, isn't all that useful for um, breaking into small utterances because they've, they've marked it up in such a way that um, it's not broken into utterances. And, they, and, the, and they've just got um, timing information just scattered kind of crazily about. There's the Canterbury Corpus, they, when they were transcribing their one, they um, had software, they wrote software, so that to, to pull out the um, utterances and so they, and the time things exactly, and they know how long they are, they know where to find them. And so the Canterbury Corpus, if you're making, if you're making a speech model, you want to use this one. But along with the um, Wellington Corpus, you can't 
you can't actually use it unless you're there because it's, it's, it's people's private conversations. You know, you can't, they don't want to um, broadcast them around the internet. It's, it's, it's unguarded speech. And um, so I can't actually get to it because I don't live in Christchurch. But uh, they, they, they're willing to, for me to get, go there and use it. Yeah, for, for you, they're, they're even they're sacking their, um, your lecturers and stuff at, at for UW Linguistics. So they, they're having hard times. But Can- Canterbury, they're, they're somehow good at getting money. Um, you know, earthquake reconstruction or something. Um, and they've got a programmer, Canterbury University. Um, and he has been working on the same thing. Oh, now, um, another source of transcribed English is Hansard and Parliament. In Parliament, everything that they say gets written down. And it's an accurate transcription in terms of um, the meaning, but they are actually they're a bit too good at at trying to get the meaning across and not the actual words. So um, if some interjections they just miss out and, and then um, like quite often they, in question times they're asking about Sarah, the Canterbury Earthquake Reconstruction Authority. Nobody says the whole thing, they just say Sarah. But the Hansard people, you know, they always write up the whole thing. And if the, when the minister replies 1200, the, um, the hand side writes down 121200, and, and um, then when you're on the other end of it, the, you're turning, the, making the dictionary, it kind of interprets it as 1200. And you get these problems um, with hand side. And then the radio is um, Radio New Zealand News, they have a, a news site which almost has exactly the same news that they're reading out. Um, although their, their speakers aren't really good examples of New Zealand English anyway. They're sort of a bit, <coughs> bit too posh. And um, teletext subtitles, I haven't actually tried it, but I think they have a um, similar tr- problem with the, um, as the hands are. They're actually you know, they're cutting to the chase a bit rather than saying everything that people say. But apparently you can get the scripts which might be closer to, um, I don't know. I, I, apparently you can get shortened script scripts and, and um, that would be a way to do it. So you need a bit of speech. Probably a few hours of speech where, and it needs to be transcribed. Um, so far I've, only, I've got about half an hour. Um, oh no, maybe more like an hour. Um, and, uh, and it forces... Um, you to use the, the CMU um, phoneme set. But it's, it's all right. So then that's one way is to adapt the existing acoustic model. The other way is to make a new one. And for the, the way you do that, it's the same. You need the same thing. You need a whole lot of speech, but you need like hours and hours, weeks of speech. Well, 50 hours is the minimum, they say. And Canterbury Corpus has 150 hours, but they, um, each time um, Robert, who's working on that, he's trying to use that, each time he, he runs it, um, I'll have to skip through these slides. Right, each time he's trying to do it, um, he's got 150 hours and um, he finds that it rejects the data, something goes wrong, it doesn't work. Um, and then he has, and there's, yeah, he has to try something to see if something else will work. And it's, um, you don't get very good information about why it's not working. It just sort of, uh, after 12 hours of running along, it, <laughs> you, you get a um, nothing. So, um, and he's finding that the, the, a lot of the transcriptions are slightly off, and just being slightly off is enough to make it not work. Um, and so he hasn't been able to construct a good model, but he has been able to find a lot of problems with the Canterbury Corpus. And so, yeah, so anyway, so we are trying to um, make a 
model of New Zealand English for speech recognition. And um, we haven't got very far. Are <laughs> uh, oh, you? Yeah? How are you going to handle the southern accent? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to Auckland. <laughs> um, that's, um, it might work if some of you were in the Canterbury Corpus, I think you might be. I mean, you know. Yeah, but so there, there'll be quite a lot of Southlanders will be in that corpus. And so... Um, yeah, I'm standing up because you run out of time. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um... Okay. Do we have... I'd like to thank Douglas very much for his talk on this. And... We probably 